I'm grateful to be here to honor Gigi and celebrate the gift that Kobe gave us all. What he accomplished as a basketball player, as a businessman, and a storyteller, and as a father. In the game of basketball, in life, as a parent, Kobe left nothing in the tank. He left it all on the floor. The questions, the wanting to know every little detail about life that they were about to embark on. He used to call me, text me, 11.30, 2.30, 3 o'clock in the morning. Talking about post-up moves, footwork, and sometimes the triangle. At first, it was an aggravation. But it, then it turned into a certain passion. This kid had passion like you would never know. It's an it's amazing thing about passion. If you love something, if you have a strong passion for something, you would go to the extreme to, to try to understand or try to get it. Either ice cream, Cokes, hamburgers, whatever you have to love. If you have to walk, you will go get it. If you have to beg someone, you will go get it. What Kobe Bryant was to me was the inspiration of someone truly cared about the way I either played the game or the way that he wanted to play the game. He wanted to be the best basketball player that he could be. And as I got to know him, I wanted to be the best big brother that I could be. To do that, you have to put up with the aggravation, the late night calls, or the dumb questions. I took great pride as I got to know Kobe Bryant that he was just trying to be a better person, a better basketball player. We talked about business. We talked about family. We talked about everything. And he was just trying to be a better person. Now he's got me. I'll have to look at another crime meme for the next. I went and saw Phil Jackson in 1999 or maybe 2000. I don't know when Phil was here in L.A. And I walk in and Kobe's sitting there. And the first thing, I'm in a suit. First thing Kobe said, did you bring your shoes? <laughs> no, I wasn't thinking about playing. But his attitude to compete and play against someone he felt like he could enhance and improve his game with. To me, that's what I loved about the kid. Absolutely loved about his, the kid. No matter where he saw me, it was a challenge. And I admired him because his passion, you rarely see someone who's looking and trying to improve each and every day, and not just in sports, but as a parent, as a husband, I am inspired by what he's done and what he shared with Vanessa and what he's shared with his kids. No one knows how much time we have. That's why we must live in the moment. We must enjoy the moment. We must reach and see and spend as much time as we can with our families and friends and the people that we absolutely love. 
To live in the moment means to enjoy each and every one that we come in contact with. When Kobe Bryant died, a piece of me died. And as I look in this arena and across the globe, a piece of you died, or else you wouldn't be here. Those are the memories that we have to live with and we learn from. I promise you, from this day forward, I will live with the memories of knowing that I had a little brother that I tried to help in every way I could. Please, rest in peace, little brother. When I have imagined speaking to a group of people about Kobe Bryant, a picture in the context of his Hall of Fame induction, or as a guest speaker at one of Kobe Vanessa's foundation event. But never ever could I have imagined that I'd be here today with my son and brother. Kobe was a loyal friend and a true Renaissance man. As many of you know, Kobe and I had a very complex relationship throughout the years. But not unlike another leadership duo, John Lennon and Paul McCartney, whose creative rivalry led to some of the greatest music of all time. Kobe and I pushed one another to play some of the greatest basketball of all time, and I am proud that no other team has accomplished what the three-peat Lakers have done since Shaq and the Kobe Lakers did it. And yes, yeah, sometimes like immature kids, we argued, we fought, we bannered or insulted each other with offhanded remarks, our feud, but make no mistake, even when the folks thought we were on bad terms when the cameras were turned off, he and I would throw a wink at each other and say, let's go whoop some ass. <laughs> we never took it seriously. In truth, Kobe and I always maintained a deep respect and a love for one another. The day I gained, the day Kobe gained my respect was the guys were complaining. I said, Shaq, Kobe's not passing the ball. I said, I'll talk to him. I said, Kobe. There's no I in team. And Kobe said, I know, but there's an in me in that motherfucker. <laughs> so I went back. <laughs> so I went back and told Rick and, uh, and Big Shot Bob, I said, just get the rebound. He's not passing. <laughs> Mamba, you were taken away from us way too soon. Your next chapter of life was just beginning, but now it's time for us to continue your legacy. You said yourself that everything negative, pressure, challenges, is all an opportunity for me to rise. So we now take that sage advice to now rise from anguish and begin with the healing. Just know that we got your back, little brother. I'll look after things down here. I'll be sure to teach Natalia, Bianca, and Baby Capri all your moves, and I promise I will not teach them my free throw techniques. <laughs> <clears throat> but for now, I take comfort in the fact that as we speak, Kobe and Gigi are holding hands, walking to the nearest basketball court. Kobe will show her some new mama moves today, and Gigi soon matches them. Kobe, your heaven's MVP, I love you, my man, until we meet again. Rest in peace, Kobe. Thank you.